On the heels of James Webb, NASA's most significant telescope launch for at least a decade, this agency has just announced the launch provider for its next, most expensive space telescope. NASA has awarded SpaceX a $255 million contract to launch the Roman Space Telescope. Notably, the vehicle of choice is the Falcon Heavy, a monster that has been absent for the past three years. Why is that? And what prompted NASA to make this choice? Let's find the answers in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Formerly known as the Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope, or WFIRST, NASA recently renamed the mission in honor of Nancy Grace Roman, a foundational force behind the Hubble Space Telescope. Fittingly, the Roman Space Telescope's basic design is reminiscent of Hubble in many ways, owing to the fact that the mission exists solely because the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office, or the NRO, chose to donate an unused multi-billion dollar spy satellite, a satellite that was effectively a secret, Earth-facing version of Hubble. However, thanks to decades of improvements in electronics, electromechanics, and the instrumentation side of spacecraft and space telescopes, RST will be dramatically more capable than the Hubble telescope it resembles. And now, after a several-year fight for survival, the Roman Space Telescope officially has a ride to space, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Falcon Heavy continues to be a bit of a paradox, winning contract after contract for increasingly high-value flagship launches despite having not launched once in more than three years. It's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy at this point, as the major missions that are increasingly being entrusted to Falcon Heavy are far more likely to run into significant spacecraft side delays. At one point in late 2021, for example, SpaceX had five Falcon Heavy launches tentatively planned in 2022, all but one of which had already been delayed several months to a year or more. Seven months into 2022, and not one of those missions has launched, and it's looking increasingly likely that Falcon Heavy will be lucky to fly at all this year. What's more, the space agency might not take advantage of potential launch options planned to debut over the next few years. That includes Blue Origin's New Glenn and Relativity Space's Terran R. However, even ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket appears to have been precluded due to rules that generally mean that only rockets certified for NASA launches today can be awarded a contract to launch a high-value spacecraft. As such, while there is a good chance that one or all of the above rockets will have launched repeatedly and potentially achieved NASA LSP certification by 2026, they have little hope of winning a 2022 competition for a 2026 launch when facing a competitor with a rocket that's already certified. In this case, that competitor is SpaceX, whose Falcon Heavy rocket is certified for even the most risk-averse NASA LSP or Launch Service Program missions. In just the last two years, SpaceX has won contracts to launch NASA's Psyche Asteroid Explorer for August of 2022, Viper Moon Rover in the fourth quarter of 2023, GOES-U Weather Satellite in the second quarter of 2024, the Europa Clipper in the fourth quarter of 2024, and the PPE and Halo modules of the Gateway Lunar Space Station in the fourth quarter of 2024. In fact, because ULA has already promised all of its remaining Delta IV Heavy and Atlas V rockets, and because ULA's Vulcan and Blue Origin's new Glenn have yet to launch at all, SpaceX is actually the only U.S. launch provider with rockets that are both available for future NASA launches and certified to launch and compete for them. As a result, NASA's press release also claims that RST will be ready to launch on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy as early as October of 2026. According to NASA, the telescope's science program also includes dedicated investigations to tackle outstanding questions about the nature and effects of dark energy and dark matter, as well as substantial general investigator program to enable further studies of astrophysical phenomena to advance other science goals and the approximate $4.3 billion Space Telescope's Falcon Heavy launch contract will cost an exceptionally steep $255 million to send the spacecraft to the Sun-Earth L2 Lagrange point, about 800,000 kilometers from Earth. NASA's contract to launch the even more expensive Europa Clipper spacecraft all the way to Jupiter with a fully expendable Falcon Heavy rocket is expected to cost less than $180 million. In addition to receiving a new valuable contract, SpaceX is making good progress with Starship. 
On Monday, SpaceX was spotted loading some of the first Starlink V2 satellite prototypes into a custom mechanism designed to refill Starship's magazine-like payload bay. While it's not the first time SpaceX has used the dispenser, the photos captured by photographer Kevin Randolph are the first to clearly show real prototypes of the next generation of Starlink satellites. According to CEO Elon Musk, those Starlink Gen 2 or V2 satellites will be at least five times better, an order of magnitude more capable, and about four times heavier than the current version 1.5 Starlink satellites. The potential of the new satellite bus design paired with Starship's massive fairing and lift capacity could dramatically improve the viability and cost-effectiveness of SpaceX's Starlink constellation. Still, loading Starship with satellites is going to be no minor feat and will add a significant amount of complexity and risk relative to the methods SpaceX currently uses for Falcon 9 Starlink launches. SpaceX's initial Starship payload bay design is a roughly square enclosure that slots just above the ship's uppermost tank dome and below its inward curving nose cone. Per a render of the mechanism released last month, it measures about 9 meters tall and 8 meters wide can store up to 54 Starlink version 2.0 satellites, and dispense pairs of satellites through a relatively tiny payload bay door that's only wide enough for the task at hand. Starship's airframe is almost exclusively welded together. Once the nose cone and payload bay are installed on top of a ship, the only way to access the interior part of the bay is through the dispenser door or even a smaller human-sized access port. SpaceX's solution, build a mobile satellite storage box that will be lifted by crane or launch tower arms dozens to hundreds of feet off the ground and use the payload bay's own dispenser mechanism in reverse to load satellites like bullets into a giant magazine. If that sounds simple, it's not. It's great then to see SpaceX apparently practicing that process with some of the first Starlink version 2.0 prototypes. In photos captured on July 18th, workers were spotted loading several satellites into the only existing loader inside one of Starbase's three main factory tents. Each satellite was lifted using a load spreader device that was presumably required to prevent the extremely long and thin satellites from bending too much in the middle during the lift. It's unclear whether SpaceX is solely practicing the process or if it's actually installing satellites well in advance for loading onto a Starship prototype. Starship S-24 is in the middle of pre-flight testing and has already been greeted by the satellite loader once before, possibly to load a prototype or mock-up before ground testing began. Starship S-25 appears to be at least a month or two away from completion, though its nose and payload bay section are much closer. And that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.